Jim Brown. Could I have order, please? We're going to begin the, with the meeting. Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the second. City of Brownsville. Give me a second. Good. We have order, please. We're about to initiate our meeting. Thank you. Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville pursuant to Chapter 551, Title 5 of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act. Notice is hereby given to the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a workshop and a regular meeting on Tuesday, February the 1st, 2011, at 5.45 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall, Old Federal Building, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Workshop Item A, update from the Environmental Advisory Committee as per Ordinance 2009-911-B. We are uh, not in a quorum, but we are gonna proceed with workshop items, and as soon as we have a quorum, we'll continue with our regular meeting. Mr. Rodriguez, proceed. Honorable Commission members, good, uh, good evening. As, as everyone in the city is well aware, the ordinance is now in effect. Uh, and I'll give an update report on, on the, where we are today and what the second phase of the, uh, of basically the, the ordinance calls for now that it's in effect. Essentially, uh, there was a marketing campaign leading up to January <coughs> 5th, and I'm going to allow healthy communities to expand on the marketing campaign. Uh, campaign. But let me begin by saying, uh, to, to date, the, uh, the enforcement and notices to comply, no citations have been issued. Only one, uh, one notice to comply has been issued. Many of the calls that we did receive in the department were people wanting to get more familiar with the ordinance uh, itself specifics. Uh, the other uh, topic that most is most often asked is clarification of the ordinance, whether it's a, a paper bag, a plastic bag, or, or cloth or non-cloth bags are allowed. And we have posted our the ordinance on the city's website, as we uh, also understand the uh, the city secretary's office also has a link to, to that as well. Also, our online uh, ordinance software company, Municode, has posted an update online for the latest version of our ordinance to, to be there. And I want to remind everyone, the latest ordinance should read 20 2010-911-F, not, not the prior version uh, that is listed. To, to, to date, uh, another question that we often get asked for and to update the commission is about the environmental fee and what it is and what it is not. Not all businesses have this fee. It is only a business owner who chose to have plastic bags until they ran out of them. Uh, and and this, this was aimed at helping the small business owner who could not return the plastic bags uh, s like this, the big businesses could. And it was meant to offset two things. One, for the small business owner to be able to deplete their single-use plastic bag. And number two was to allow consumers, because this ordinance was asking for a behavioral change, to, to accommodate themselves to this ordinance. And in many ways, uh, uh, proponents or people who are not, not in support of this ordinance will say it's a tax. It is not a tax. It is a fee that is only for the businesses that have chosen to carry plastic bags until their stock runs out. Now the Environmental Advisory Committee is going to be bringing forth a recommendation in the very near future of uh, ending this uh, environmental fee as it's proposed. Once we feel enough our citizens are now, uh, have, have um, progressed to the point where this is no longer necessary. The actual ordinance has received a lot of attention nationally. We have had a lot of cities uh, call wanting to get more information about the ordinance. And uh, Hawaii recently passed a very similar ordinance. Uh, city of Corpus Christi, City of Austin, and City of San Antonio have, uh, we've had lengthy conversations with them about the ordinance. City of El Paso is currently proposing something similar uh, to this ordinance. But we're merely uh, guiding them to our website and, and to what's going on. The next uh, aspect I want to talk to you about is the, um, the marketing campaign. And I'm going to allow healthy communities to come up here. Just, just a reminder to everyone, we will come back with a report. And our next report will probably also have actions on the ordinance if necessary. Thank you.
Good evening, I'm Rose Timmer with Healthy Communities. And we did have a marketing campaign and managed to uh, raise $90,000 by begging. Uh, and we put on a campaign with digital billboards, regular billboards, the buses are still running. Um, and we have, uh, I know, the city of Brownsville and uh, the major stores have given out close to 150,000 reusable bags. We are still getting calls for reusable bags. I got one today from a uh, food bank. So it's been going well. There have been a couple of glitches. There's a couple of people who are not happy. And I was asked to say that not everybody in Brownsville wants the plastic bag ban. I know of two people who wrote me a letter and said, don't say that because it's not true. So I'm going to say that, that it's not everybody in Brownsville is happy about it. But I think we need to give it time to settle and to work out. But it's kind of refreshing to know that it is supported by a lot of different people. And you see it in the, in the different stores. And the, the retail stores have supported it also. Do you have any questions? I'm sorry that I came in a little bit late, but one of the <laughs> questions that I had was, and I've gotten comments and, and calls about whether or not they're going to charge per transaction or per bag. And I'd like it that clarified. I know the answer to the question, but the I, I think that yeah. needs to be addressed. The, the first weeks of the ordinance, we got that question asked a lot. Yeah. And we sent a code enforcement o official every time the, the call would come in. In every instance where that call came in, once we met with the manager, it was clarified that it was per transaction and not per bag. And, we're in and if anyone out there is being charged per bag, we'd like for them to save a copy of the receipt, bring it so that we can address the matter with the retailer. Okay. okay. And so you have you have followed up and you're continuing to follow up on that issue, correct? Yes, sir. And, Thank you. And uh, like I said, initially because of the, it being a new ordinance, there were a lot of questions to that. This being the third week of the ordinance, we are no longer getting calls along those issues. And we repeatedly continue to answer, uh, as we're doing our regular food inspections, we continue to remind managers of this ordinance and, and what is uh, effective under the ordinance and what is not uh, part of the ordinance. And are you just addressing it to managers or actually to clerks? Because you know, a lot of times, I don't know if you all need to have some sort of, I know you're doing it now and you're getting the word out through the public access channel, but do we need to have some sort of repeat programming where that comes out so that people understand that? We actually have a uh, frequently asked questions document and there's another form online that we uh, encourage managers to hand out to their employees. Uh, and this was one of the committee's actions that they took so that managers could hand that out to their employees because uh, when, we, when we're there, normally we talk to the managers, not, not every employee. But uh, we felt that it would be another way to reach out to the employees by handing out a manager, to the manager, some documents that could facilitate them getting out the, the word to their employees. Thank you. Uh, Art, it should be noted that most of the stores, if not, if not all, have, have initiated their own training with their own employees. You know, for example, HEB. They created an entire, entirely new manual for how to bag, what to do, the whole, everything they need to know about the ordinance. Uh, let me ask you this, Art. If somebody brings their bags to HEB or Walmart because this happened uh, to an individual, are they being asked to bag their own groceries or will the store bag? Mm -hmm. We heard that today. We, I heard that uh, really recently and the or that's not a, a part of the ordinance. Right. <laughs> a and that would be more of a store policy and we would hope that that has not changed, that, right. that the sackers are still sacking the, the, the bags for their, for their customers, but uh, we'll be happy to meet with, with any, is, any uh, retailer who, who uh, is un, under the impression that this ordinance calls for people to bag their own bags, which is not, not part of the ordinance. And I just wanted to clarify that because I know when we meet with each of those store, store managers, that was never an issue that, uh, well, that was never a question whether Customers would have to bag their own. It's like it's, right, it's, no. it's the checkout, the checkers. You know, we did have dry run days where many of you attended, and and, and many people were very familiar with the ordinance. And leading up to the ordinance, uh, the effective date of the ordinance, uh, our our feedback was that over 90 percent of, of the citizens were aware uh, of the ordinance. Um, I want to add, we calculated based on national statistics used. We 
We think conservatively that about 350,000 single-use bags are out of the stream cycle now for daily use in Brownsville alone. So if you're seeing a, uh, a different kind of litter, I want to say it's, it's not single-use plastic bags. I had one question. I asked you earlier, um, there was a question or confusion at Walmart about what kind of plastic bags you could put the chicken or the beef in. Did you have an answer for that? Yes, that's a good question. Let me update that. Most um, businesses that have a meat market or a fruit vegetable market have those real thin plastic bags. And a lot like of people- Like you put your fruit in. Where right you put yeah. your fruit in. Okay. Well, the meat markets have those also, but people were not accustomed to looking for them in the meat market area. And if you will look closely now, they, most of the grocery stores do have those plastic bags in the meat market areas. And, and on my own personal side, when I go to one of these local stores, I'll look for them and they are there. Okay. All right, we'll get one last question. When, s when somebody says that the ordinance affects the elderly because the bags, re a reusable bag mm -hmm. is worse than a plastic bag, what would, what would be your answer to that? In terms of they say it's more heavier for the elderly, they can't, they can't carry their bag. What, what would you say to that? Well, the bag, the bag I've used nowadays is a personal choice and there's bags of many different sizes. Uh, if someone wants to carry a bag that emulates the size and the quantity of, a, of what a plastic bag used to be, that, that is an individual choice. We're not regulating any aspect of that someone has to use a big bag or a medium bag or a small bag. That is, um, a, a customer or a, a citizen has the right to use any size bag. You will find that the reusable bags, the reusable bags that are currently out there do hold more than what you get in your plastic bag. And I think maybe that's where the problem is. But if grandma and grandpa are having a hard time, they just need to either use more bags or uh, go to a smaller bag, which they are out there. I know HEB has some. They're a kid size, but they're available. But that, I think that's what the problem is. They're bigger and you can put more stuff in them, which is what's happening. I actually, I actually like you. that because then I have to carry fewer bags into my house. Right. Yeah. Right. And we know that the biggest problem people are having, the biggest thing we hear is, I forget my bag. But if you forget your bag, put them in your cart and take them to your car. And we still have stickers to give out if, if, that you can put on your windshield or on your uh, window, reminding you to do that, con to, to bring your bags. But it's, it's coming along. A lot of people are saying, I don't really need a bag. And that's, that's another option also. All right, I'm sorry, and I know I said I had one last question, but this, <laughs> is, this has also come up because I, sure. I get it all the time. I'm sure everyone else does. The fee, where does it go to? People have said, and I've heard, you know, this is going to go to help the city. You know, you know, th there's another way for the city to make money. There's another way for Walmart's to make money. Where exactly does the one dollar surcharge? The go the to? amendment we made to the ordinance of 2010 911-F specifically outlines the use of this money for uh, environmental use. And I don't, I can't quote the ordinance that that portion of the ordinance, but it is specifically outlined that we're limited as to how the city can use those, those monies. They're specifically to be used for environmental awareness, for environmental cleanups, things that actually will benefit the environment. Arturo, I'm gonna, ask, uh, I'm gonna ask a favor of you, and I hope it's not imposing on too much, but I'm gonna ask that you and your staff get together with library and come up with an infomercial in Spanish and in English, and specifically outlining for right now, while the, while the dollar surcharge is being charged, that you indicate on there so that the people can understand. I understand if we put a document up on, on channel 12 or 17.2 now, but the real effect on it is, you know, some people need to see it. So if you could please get with staff and start working on something like that and get it on there, something that's a little bit more concrete, a little bit more, you know, a little, a little bit clearer. So that we can start getting all that on there. Okay. There's currently an English only version running with a, it was an interview with Ms. Tipton, yes. uh, but I can expand on it more specifically to the, to the fee. I realize that, but my request is that you do it through staff, through your staff so that it can be a city official directing to the citizens. Very well. Okay, no. thank you. Thank you. I, I have something to add and to complement his request, I'd like to see us add to the PSA some information as to why this ordinance was passed 
um, the effects of a plastic bag on our drainage system, um, the effects on, on economic development. People don't understand that you know, if you have a city that's unsightly and you're hosting prospective clients, prospective businesses, it does have an impact on their decision. And our most latest business that we came to relocate here in the Titan Building, one of the compliments we received from them was that we did pass this ordinance and that we do take an active role and that we are engaged in what our community looks like. Yeah. Not to mention our trails, our parks, we take good care of all our resources and the fact that we passed this ordinance was a plus for them. And you had a, you had a very good response to somebody that wrote to you an email. Your response is uh, spot on about why we did it. So we, if we could lose what you wrote in that email, Yes, would be great because you brought very good points about economic tourism <coughs> and how the city looks, and you made it make uh, the person very well aware of why we did it. it. You know, so if we could do that, then we could certainly use your words to do that. Sure, absolutely. I'd okay. be happy to revise that and okay. put in Thank bullet you. points. Let me have you to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you give me a copy of the agenda, please? Okay. Antes de comenzar, le quiero dar la bienvenida al alcalde Alfonso, Alfonso Sánchez Garza de Matamoros. Este, ya tuviste el gusto de conocer a Isabel. Rosales, eh, representante del, uh, del diputado este, estatal René Oliveira. Le damos la bienvenida de parte del Cabildo, de los ciudadanos de Longview y como alcalde, este, tengo el honor de recibirte. Era, me hubiera gustado acompañarte, pero estaba un poquito demorado. Eh, la sesión de Cabildo normalmente comienza a las seis. Eh, este, vamos a entrar eh, a la sesión y luego comenzamos con unas cositas ahí y luego estamos en la ceremonia en la esquinita, en, en su honor, nos da gusto que está aquí presente con nosotros, con toda su delegación. Bienvenido, alcalde. Uh, would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for this great nation we live in. We thank you for this city we live in. Lord, I, I thank you for the leaders you've provided before us. And Lord, as we go into this campaign season, I ask that every candidate conduct their campaign in a way that is respectful of their opponents and everybody involved. Lord, I, I thank you for the relationship with our sister city, Madam Morris, and our distinguished guests that are here tonight. I ask you to bless them as well, lead and guide them. Lord, I ask you to take care of our homeless people in the city tonight as it gets cold in the next few days. Lead and guide them and provide for them. Lord, bless this meeting. Lead and guide each leader. Give them divine direction, divine knowledge, and cooperation with each other as they make the decisions that affect our city. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. If uh, we could skip one and two and move. I don't know if my glasses on. I misplaced my, my other glasses. Um, the uh, reaffirmation of sister city status of Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico, and the presentation. Can I have a motion for that? So moved. Move. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Gerardo Danache, si me haces el favor de introducir las personas que acompañaron al alcalde, y luego si el alcalde este, eh, se, 
presente aquí con nosotros para claro que sí. hacer la ceremonia. Tenemos el día de hoy al presidente municipal de Matamoros, Tamaulipas, el ingeniero Alfonso Sánchez Garza, acompañado de su distinguida esposa Tilia. Tenemos también a representantes del Cabildo de Matamoros, a la familia del alcalde, a su señor padre, el ingeniero Alfonso Sánchez. Tenemos a su suegro, el señor Jesús Roberto Guerra y distinguidas personalidades de Matamoros. Thank you. Um, City Secretary, the, the proclamation, the reaffirmation of sister city status of Matamoros, Tamaulipas. Alcalde, este, en este momento vamos a presentar una reafirmación de las alianzas con Matamoros y la hermandad con Matamoros. Este, eh, la señorita Isabel va a dar unas palabras de parte del representante René Olvera, diputado estatal. Please come forward, uh, Isabel. Estimado Presidente Municipal Alfonso Sánchez Garza, a nombre de la Cámara de Representantes del Estado de Texas, ofrecemos esta bandera de Texas como símbolo de nuestro agradecimiento para una relación próspera entre Brownsville y la irónica ciudad de Matamoros, Tamaulipas. Compartimos muchas cosas, historia, familias, el río Bravo, habitat natural y comercio internacional. Trabajamos conjuntos a, haciendo grandes cosas para nuestra región compartida. Estamos muy agradecidos por esta relación histórica y esperamos una relación continua, a, amistosa y productiva a medida que avanzamos en el siglo XXI. Su bandera. A proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, reaffirming its sister city ties with Heroica Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico. Whereas on October 17, 1995, the City of Brownsville unanimously approved a resolution binding our city of historic Brownsville, Texas, and the city of Heroica Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico as sister cities, and whereas today as then, much of the history of Texas and our nation is indebted to the people who originally settled in this region of Texas and Mexico. And whereas today as then, we continue to share in the development of the natural resources, the economic fiber, tourism, and the education of our people. And whereas today as then, we strive to coexist harmoniously with a high admiration and respect for the people of Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico. And whereas the two cities continue to be allies in economic development and good neighbor policies. Hence, this reaffirmation of the 15-year-old sister city agreement. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the charter of said city, and on behalf of all our citizens, do hereby reaffirm our sister city status with the Heroica Matamoros Tamaulipas, Mexico, for the advancement and betterment of both communities. Done on this, the first day of February 2011, signed by Mayor Pat Almada, Jr., City Commissioners of Brownsville.
buenas tardes a todos. Quiero agradecer sinceramente a mi amigo, el mayor Pat Ahumada, y a todos los habitantes de esta vecina ciudad por, otor por otorgarme tan honrosa distinción. Sin duda este reconocimiento es una muestra más de la hermandad, del respeto y de la buena voluntad que existe entre Bronzeville y Matamoros. Como presidente municipal de Matamoros, me siento muy honrado porque recibo hoy esta gran distinción que representa el afán de fortalecer y estrechar aún más los vínculos de amistad que unen a estas dos ciudades hermanas, Bronzeville y Matamoros, ciudades que comparten tradición, historia y un esfuerzo común por hacer de esta región una zona de prosperidad, donde lo mejor de sus características está en su gente, gente alegre, dinámica, de trabajo, que plasma su huella con la sinceridad de su corazón. Así somos los ciudadanos de Bronzeville y de Matamoros. La interacción que existe entre ambas ciudades, a través de su gente, es fundamental para el desarrollo económico de nuestra zona. Por eso hoy, en este día tan especial, afirmo que debemos seguir trabajando muy estrechamente para seguir fortaleciendo nuestros lazos de cooperación y de vinculación. Nuestra cercanía e integración nos hace compartir retos y adversidades, pero estoy convencido que la unión y la enorme colaboración que existe entre nosotros serán cualidades fundamentales para superar cualquier desafío que se nos presente en el futuro. Nuestras ciudades tienen mucho que ofrecer, tienen mucho que aportar a esta región. Sigamos colaborando como hasta ahora lo hemos hecho e impulsemos juntos el desarrollo de nuestras ciudades. Agradezco infinitamente esta muestra de cariño al brindarme las puertas de su casa, otorgándome las llaves de esta bonita ciudad de Bronzeville. Y qué mejor ocasión para reiterarles a todos ustedes, amigas y amigos, que la gente de Matamoros aprecia y valora profundamente la gran hermandad que existe entre estas dos ciudades. Decirles que siempre encontrarán en nosotros, los matamorenses, la mejor disposición y ánimo para hacer de nuestras fronteras una frontera más segura, más próspera, pero sobre todo una frontera más fuerte para todos. Muchísimas gracias una vez más, Pat, por tu amistad, por tu apoyo y quiero que sepas que yo creo que lo principal para lograr pues, el deseo que tenemos de fortalecer la hermandad entre Bronzeville y Matamoros, pues es precisamente la voluntad. Y me queda claro que la voluntad existe entre Matamoros y Bronzeville para que sigamos siendo ciudades hermanas. Muchas gracias.
have until after we've done the proclamation. A proclamation of the City Commission. A proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, proclaiming February 1 through 28, 2011, as Career and Technical Education Month in the City of Brownsville. Whereas February the 1st through 28th of 2011 has been designated as Career and Technical Education Month by the Association for Career and Technical Education, and whereas profound economic and technological changes in our society are rapidly re reflected in the structure and nature of work, thereby placing new and additional responsibilities on our educational system. And whereas career and technical education provides Americans with a school to careers connection and is the backbone of a strong, well-educated workforce, which fosters productivity in business and industry and contributes to America's leadership in the international marketplace. And whereas career and technical education gives high school students experience in practical, meaningful applications of basic, basic skills, such as reading, writing, and math mathematics, thus improving the quality of their education, motivating potential dropouts, and giving all students leadership opportunities in their fields and in their communities. And whereas career and technical education offers individuals lifelong opportunities to learn new skills, which provide them with career choices and potential satisfaction. And whereas the ever-increasing cooperative efforts of career and technical educators, business and industry stimulate the growth and vitality of our local economy and that of the entire nation by preparing graduates for career fields forecast to experience the largest and fastest growth in the next decade. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the Charter of said city, and on behalf of all our citizens, hereby proclaim February 1 through 28, 2011, as Career and Technical Education Month in the City of Brownsville and urge all citizens to become familiar with the services and benefits offered by the Career and Technical Education programs in this community and to support and participate in these programs to enhance their individual work skills and productivity. Done on this the first day of February 2011, signed by Mayor Pat Almada and City Commissioners. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jose Guadalupe Torres, and I am here representing the Career and Technical Education Program. Career and Technical Education, also known as CATE, has long and rich history in the United States. Today, CATE has evolved from a limit of number, number of programs available at the turn of the 20th century into a broad system that encompasses a variety of challenging fields and diverse subject areas which are constantly evolving due to the changing global economy. Today, I am here representing the Criminal Justice Department, along with fellow students in programs such as culinary arts, health science, information technology, business education, and other training programs. These programs have been instrumental in our school involvement and attending academic goals. We have learned the importance of competition, leadership, teamwork, and becoming productive citizens. Some of today's career and technological education programs provide students with academic subject matter taught with relevance to the real world, employability skills from job-related skills to workplace ethics, career pathways that link secondary and post-secondary education, second chance education and training, education for additional training and degrees, especially related to workplace training, skills upgrades, and career advancements. The CAPE program is a second home. Like a child raised by the parents, students are introduced into not only job-related skills, but also normative morals and humanitarian values. The CAPE program sets high standards for students' academic excellence. Personally, the CAPE program has enhanced my social interaction with others at various levels of communication. I have managed everyday's conflicts and social issues with reasoning and understanding. Other fellow students, like me, are trained to exemplify the roles that society requires to thrive. 
Therefore, the CAPE program shapes students to become efficient, dynamic, and versatile. To the City of Bronzeville and its leaders, I would like to say thank you for your support and recognition of career and technical education. With your support, you help us lead the way to a better future. of the month. That's Mayor, member of the commission, I don't know if I need to introduce San Juanita better known as Janie Bitron to you all. Janie joined our city as a volunteer employee in 1996. Six months later, she was offered and thanks, we thank her, she accepted a job in September 19th, 19th of that same year. Shortly after that, she went and started working at the Public uh, Works Department from 1997 to 2003. And as you remember, in 2003 is when we, we decided to move to our new building uh, from City Hall. And Janie has been downstairs greeting our employees, uh, mem uh, visitors to our city, visitors to our department since then. Uh, and it doesn't seem that a day doesn't go by when I walk in there and she says good morning and uh, makes the day more worthwhile. She really sparks up the day for us. And uh, for all she's done for us, uh, she's always there volunteering. She was a public work. She volunteered in a lot of assignments and things like that worked during uh, the tro tropical depressions and always was there for us answering the phones. Phone etiquette is a class she does not have to go to. She honestly needs to teach that class uh, and, and also uh, greeting our people. So we love her to death and we want to uh, honor her with the employee of the month for September of this year. And of course she deserves our watch, <laughs> which we've made a little bit smaller for the ladies now. Employ the month pin. <laughs> and the plaque uh, for the month of uh, September 2011, recognition of the outstanding services she's provided to our city. Congratulations, Jane. Thank you everybody for this. I'm very honored. I want to thank my director and assistant director, Ms. Lilia and Oscar. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let me say, she's one of my favorite people because you come into this building, she really lights you up. She's always cheerful, very professional, and as hectic as it gets, She's very cool. She maintains control. Thank you, Jane, for what you do for the city and everybody else here. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you want to go back to the reports? You want? You all want to skip the reports? Let's keep going. Okay. You want to go to uh, consent agenda items? So moved. Second. second. Uh, motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Uh, item six, 
Item six, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint two members to the airport advisory board. Okay, do we have any nominees? I'd like to nominate Elena Cantu. Elida Cantu, excuse me. Elida. Elida. Elida Cantu. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Dr. Gowan. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. Is there anybody else? Do I give you a reappointment to appoint? Anybody else? No other candidates? We just need to know which position that's for. You don't have to whisper. Okay, we just need to know which position that is for okay. of the two. Who is she replacing or? Okay. okay. Are we talking about in the length of term? Well, it'll be this, the, the term <coughs> you know, carried out, in other words, a new term. But there are two people that are actually being considered by yourselves this evening. So it's gotta be one or the other. Okay, it's, it's whichever, she, okay. she just wants, she wants to serve wants to on the advisory board. Pardon? Who Google, wants to get it? Google. Well, both individuals have filled out the form and turned that in for them expressing their interest in it. There are two individuals, that's the two that are highlighted in yellow, they're the ones that are up for appointment or replacement this evening. That's Ruben Rodriguez as well as Chris Houston. So the new appointment will need to replace one or the other of those. I'll make the motion to reappoint Chris Houston. Okay. Second. So we have a motion and a second to reappoint Chris Houston. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Good choice. Okay, item seven. Item Thank seven, you. public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2011-795-F to amend chapter 102 of the city code of ordinances establishing uniform requirements for direct and indirect contributions into the wastewater collection and treatment system of the city of Brownsville and prohibiting certain general discharges, limiting specific pollutants, requiring protection from accidental discharges, providing for fees and charges, providing for wastewater contribution permits, providing reporting requirements, providing for inspection and sampling, providing confidentiality requirements, providing for enforcement procedures, amending sections 102-371 through 102-603 to conform with the provisions of Article 7 as amended by repealing all ordinances inconsistent herewith, providing a severability clause, providing a penalty and ordaining other matters incidental thereto. Is there anybody here from PUB? I want to uh, introduce or defer this to our Albert Gomez from PUB and Karen Hayes Consultants. Thank you. Yes, uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, esteemed commissioners, uh, good evening. I'm Albert Gomez with the Public Brownsville Public Utilities Board, and uh, we're here to present the, some modifications to the ordinance. Uh, we have uh, our pre-treatment manager, uh, Ramiro Capitran, and also Ann Whitco, our consultant on this project uh, with Ambiotech. So uh, this time I'll turn it over to Ann Whitco to go over those modifications. Thank you, good evening. Your Honorable Mayor, esteemed City Commission, this is the first reading for the City of Brownsville Ordinance 2011-795-F. The referenced ordinance gives legal authority to the Brownsville Public Utilities Board to administer and enforce a pretreatment program as mandated by the EPA through the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality based on federal regulation 40 CFR Part 403. The Brownsville Public Utilities Board pretreatment program serves to control pollutants from industrial users which may pass through or interfere with wastewater treatment processes or which may contaminate sewage sludge. The program prevents the introduction of pollutants that could cause health or safety problems to the public or the environment. On October 14, 2005, the EPA revised federal regulation 40 CFR Part 403 in what is referred to as the streamlining rule. The streamlining rule resulted in the need for publicly owned treatment works to revise their pretreatment programs to meet the required modifications. There were three main required modifications made to the program. The first change involves the incorporation of slug controller requirements into the program, including the need for each significant industrial user to be evaluated for the need of a plan within one year of being designated as a significant user. Currently, all eight significant industrial users in the Brownsville PUB service area have been evaluated and have approved plans in place. The second modification involves modifying the de definition of significant noncompliance. 
from section 102-375, number 55, of the ordinance to include additional types of standards and requirements affecting chronic violations and technical review criteria violations. The third modification relates to provisions and sampling and reporting requirements. Specifically, categorical industrial users subject to best management practice practices must now include their compliance with those practices in their reports and all such practices must be included in the permit. This currently only applies to one categorical significant user. Sampling requirements must now be followed for all compliance reports, whereas previously this was only true of the baseline monitoring report and 90 day compliance report. Finally, all non-categorical significant industrial users are required to provide representative samples in their periodic monitoring reports. All modifications to the ordinance herein mentioned were presented to and approved by the DPUD Board of Directors and are required by the TCEQ to remain in compliance with their Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, as far as action. Would it close? The motion closed and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Would it approve? Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item um, eight. Item eight. Public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2011-1538, amending chapter 98 traffic and vehicles of the city of Brownsville code of ordinances by adding section 98-14, use of a wireless communication device offense. Okay, this ordinance was modeled uh, after McCown's ordinance that was passed recently, and I think uh, for good reason, I think to save lives. Uh, anybody texting while driving puts themselves in danger, but also puts everybody else on the road in danger. And uh, we tried uh, to pass an ordinance, well, I introduced an ordinance about three years ago to uh, make it hands-free uh, phone, but it didn't pass. But I think this this uh, should be given serious consideration. This should be given serious consideration. People can still be allowed to use their phone, but not texting. Uh, it's all related to texting because uh, it, it is a big distraction from what they're supposed to be doing, which is paying attention to the road and uh, you know try to drive safely. It's hard enough as it is uh, without putting people at risk by texting. So. I'd like for the commission to consider this. Uh, model right, right, right uh, the same as uh, McCallum. It passed, and I think uh, we should do the same. So may I may have the floor? Sure. I want to, I guess, I want to acknowledge, Mayor, that um, our state rep, Eddie the Third, has introduced a house bill to make this state text free uh, while driving. And I appreciate his efforts and, and hopefully having every other state rep within the state of Texas concur and agree and adopt that House resolution. Um, I think it's, it's something that's needed across the state. Um, I appreciate what McAllen has done for City of McAllen, um, but I do want to know that, I do want to acknowledge that our state representative um, is making an effort to do something for the entire state, um, and, and we acknowledge him and we acknowledge uh, the fact of such an important legislation uh, needs to be adopted. Is that, is that a motion to pass this? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, we got a second. Well, we have a public hearing, don't we? Do we have to close the public hearing? Public hearing. Oh, it is a public hearing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a close. Okay, motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? I have a comment. Oh, you have? Yes. Chief. Answer to my question, but I bring you up just for clarification. Um, upon a stop, it will be left at officer's discretion whether the person to be cited is what. What are the legal ramifications, or what is it that an officer will use to be able to determine if the person was texting if they're going to be cited for such an offense? Well, definitely, <coughs> excuse me. Definitely, the officer has to uh, see it in plain view, similar to any other off, uh, traffic offense that occurs out there or any type of violation of city ordinance. So definitely he would have to be uh, a witness to the, to the violation of the city ordinance. Conduct a traffic stop, cite the individual for the violation of this ordinance if it's, it's approved. 
uh, inside of Mexico Municipal Court. Within these rights, does the officer have the right to request a phone from an individual? Not by, not by the ordinance at this point, no. Right. I mean, but uh, definitely on plain view, uh, a violation of any traffic law, a violation of any city ordinance, uh, citing the individual or even arresting him if he refuses to sign a citation, uh, then the court will determine uh, whether you know, the individual was in violation or not. Thank you. Uh, PG, oh, go ahead. I just have a question. <coughs> what uh, Commissioner Longoria has brought up, if you have someone who signs off on the, uh, the ticket and says, I understand I have to appear in municipal court within so many days, the proof that they were actually texting is either going to have to come through their phone records or the actual cellular phone itself. So how do you plan on maintaining your chain of custody on this item? Well, I mean, we're going to treat it as a, as a violation of, of, of moving, a violation of a city ordinance based on what the officer saw. Just like the situation like a where, where, like when, a stop when, when an individual <laughs> runs a stop sign or stop light. Okay. And that's, that's all we have. That's all we have at that time. Uh, definitely we wanted to go further beyond that. Uh, it will cost us a lot more uh, manpower. We try to subpoena the telephone records of individuals Time, to prove money, in court right. uh, if he or she decides to contest the case at the municipal court level. But Chief, this is not a federal offense. It's just a no, sir, definitely not. No, sir. This is the deterrent to save lives. That's simply that's what we're doing. <coughs> yes, sir. And let me go back here. Uh, several months ago, last year, uh, I introduced a, a departmental policy that prohibits our officers from using their cell phone while they're driving. They need to pull over. So that would include not only you know, talking on the cell phone, but also texting. And all their provisions there of how to use their personal cell phone and how not to use it while on duty. And I, for the record, I support this. But my question was based on curiosity for what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, it appeared to me that uh, you know it's one of these things that you can pretty much get around. Well, down. yes, sir. And definitely, I think it's going to be up to the driver to, you know, make a determination uh, if he's going to, uh, or he or she is going to be texting uh, or accessing internet sites while driving, and does he want to go to the trouble of appearing in court uh, for such uh, violations? So hopefully, this will be a, this, the ordinance serves as a deterrence. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Like I said, uh, three years ago, we tried to pass uh, hands-free telephones. It didn't pass, so maybe this is the next best thing because there are too many lives that are lost by people that are distracted using the phone or texting. But a lot, texting takes a lot of uh, concentration and focus uh, and distracts you even more than just focusing. And we've been hoping all this year that uh, our state legislators would pass something that would prohibit uh, the use of cell phone when driving or texting. It'll become a moot issue here locally if it's passed statewide. Yes, sir. So we'll, see, we'll wait to see what happens there. But and in, just the meantime, uh, in the meantime, I think it'd be good to, to try and save some lives here locally by passing this uh, ordinance. Well, anyway, we have a public hearing. If I may make one of the comments. Yeah, sure. And I believe that uh, what both uh, Commissioner Camarillo and the Chief have indicated and what uh, the Mayor is also indicating mm -hmm. is when we were up in Austin for the Brownsville Day, the state legislators did indicate that they were asking for cities to push this issue so that they could then back stra strap that onto a, na a statewide law. Yes, sir. So thank you. I didn't hear that. Thank you. Yes, sir. I want to run over. Um, we have a motion to close the public hearing and so a second. Moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Would Action approve. item. Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item nine. Item nine, public comment.
ten discussion and possible action regarding execution of an economic development and transportation infrastructure funding agreement to provide for the construction and development of west morrison road uh, good afternoon uh, this is the uh, agreement with the west morrison owners uh, that we had uh, presented previously to the city commission uh, basically under this agreement the the, uh, the cost of the development of west morrison road would be split equally between the city and the developers who are developing the project uh, the city would forward uh, or would advance uh, approximately s up to seven hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars for in addition to that for the development of the project however that money would be repaid back to the city within five years uh, or upon the subdivision or whichever came uh, sooner uh, the the uh, money that the city would be advancing would be protected uh, as follows first of all uh, the creation of the PID the PID would uh, allow the assessments uh, on the property which would there would be uh, then there, there would then be liens on the, uh, the property uh, to, to enforce that the money got paid back to the city uh, second of all we also have a guarantee of the Morrison owners Inc so in addition to the to the, uh, the the liens on the property which would guarantee repayment to the city we also have the corporate guarantee of the Morrison owners Inc uh, which if it was not paid back they would pay it back so uh, the city's interests are basically not protected once but protected twice uh, we what we would do is we'd create uh, a PID, uh, and I would ask that you approve this agreement subject to uh, creation of a PID uh, in, in, at the next meeting or two. Okay. What would, be the the life, questions? what would be the life expectancy of the PID? Uh, the, basically, the, the life expectancy of the PID would be to, uh, for the, 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 the sole purpose for the PID would be to do the assessments and to m make sure the money would come back to the city. So uh, it would be five to seven years, and you can cl you can you're not creating a PID today. You're approving an agreement uh, subject to a, a approval of a PID, uh, but I, th I th it would be approximately five to seven years. But that, that issue isn't before the commission. So right. until the city's paid back. The until the, the city's paid away. back in full, right? The PID goes away. Correct. Excuse me. Any other questions? I have a question about the. Uh, I believe I I saw some language about the uh, Laredo Road. Uh, the Laredo Road is actually part of the, uh, th that is being funded by the developers itself, but Mr. Sanchez can answer that question. <coughs> yes, sir. I was just curious, it, there was language in there regarding the, uh, the completion of Laredo Road, or Correct. and that is going to be accelerated, or that's, that's going to be in conjunction with? That's going to be concurrent with the uh, construction of West Morrison Road. Okay. And that will be at the sole expense of that particular developer, which is something their properties. Okay. The city will not have any And the city has no interest in that, is not contributing no, to that no anyway? No, no expense to the city whatsoever. It's about $1.6 million for the construction of that road alone. And that's not being credited towards the completion of this project? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner, as you know, Laredo Road is a vital artery to fl traffic flow in that entire area. So the fact that this is a part of that, I think it's just, it's huge. It's, it's so necessary. Appreciate it. Thank you. Move to approve, Grant. We have a motion to approve. Second. second. We have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried. Next item. Item 11, consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2011-004 in support of the Cameron County Regional Mobility Authority's application to the Texas Department of Transportation to fund the construction of the remaining improvements needed on US 77 I-69 to the lower Rio Grande Valley in Texas. Mayor, members of the commission, the, uh, the agenda is, the resolution is pretty self-explanatory. We, we are requesting to, through, through the Cameron County Authority, to uh, apply for funding from TxDOT uh, to uh, enable us to justify the I-69 corridor. We're talking about funding from Noasis County to Brownsville. And we're, talking about $180 million. And uh, request your approval so we can submit this to the Cameron County Mobile Authority. Okay, this is self-explanatory. Uh, do we have a motion? So second moved. Second. We have a motion, second, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried. Item 12. Item 12, consideration and action. <coughs> to acknowledge the Deputy City Manager CFO's financial statements and cash investment report for the city of Brownsville for the first quarter ended December 31st, 2010.
Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Commission. Uh, this is this report is for the period ending or ended uh, December 31st, 2010, or the first quarter of the fiscal year. Um, we have placed a uh, in front of you a report of all the uh, operating funds, capital project funds that the city has, and this is through the uh, period end, ended uh, December 31st, 2010. And I do have a PowerPoint presentation that I will go over with you tonight on this particular period. Um, there, there obviously there are some, uh, I think we've got the wrong one. I'm going to I'm going to go over. I don't have a, a uh, PowerPoint presentation for the period ending uh, December 31st. Uh, the uh, I do have a, a handout. If you, if you if you could use the handout in front of you of the uh, PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to go as best as I can regarding this uh, presentation. On page two of the um, of the PowerPoint presentation, it's got some areas of concern. And one of the areas that we, we have concerns with, obviously, is the, uh, the condition of the state's budget. Uh, we know that they are going to be reducing allocations not only to the cities, but to the school district and to the university. And that, obviously, is going to have a, a possible negative impact or on our economy. Uh, if, if, if there's an unemployment, uh, if there's a dec increase in unemployment, obviously, there's going to be less money to be spent in our economy, obviously it's gonna reflect our sales tax. We also see a decline in, uh, in the Veterans Bridge uh, revenues. We, we right now, there are about, based on the numbers that we see right now, it's gonna be about to maybe $600,000 less than what we got last year. Uh, we also see a decline in uh, building permits. Uh, uh, they, uh, they are down about 36%. They are, hopefully, they are for the remaining three quarters of the year that they, they will improve. And obviously, our unemployment rate continues to be very, very high. So obviously, this, this has an impact on our economy. Uh, there are positive news on page three, and the, that, sh that indicates, or actually page four, um, shows that the uh, uh, sales tax for the, for the period is, uh, for the first quarter, is running about 6% over the same period as last year. But we have to remember that this peer, we're comparing a period that was very bad a year ago, uh, but at least there is an improvement of 6%. Mm -hmm. uh, as we go through the, uh, the PowerPoint, uh, you can go back to page seven, and uh, the sales tax uh, shows uh, uh, slowly uh, climbing uh, to the previous two years, the 2009 and <coughs> 2010. Um, Again, on page eight shows you the, uh, the bridge fund. Uh, the first page, page eight, shows you the activity for the from last year. We had a 30% decline. Right now, as far as bridge revenues, on page nine, it shows a, a decline of almost 21%. And page 10 is a graph of uh, this uh, similar declines in, uh, in veterans bridge. Obviously, this uh, affects our budget. Um, as we go through, I'll be skipping some pages. Uh, we'll go to page, 
page 17, this is, a, this is a, an important uh, page that we want to go over with you. Um, as you can see, there are some revenues in the budget that are not coming about, and one of them is the $617,000. Uh, if you recall, uh, the, the city approved the budget in September of 2010. PUB did not approve their budget until October 6. When the city commission approved the city's budget, it had this uh, an amount of 617,000 that we were hoping that the, that the Brownsville PUB would advance us the cash for to pay the utilities of the nonprofits, which about 617,000 dollars. Obviously, that did, that's, that was not approved by the by the PUB board. Also, on the um, there was also <coughs> you recall the late penalty for uh, late payments for customers from the, from the PUB. Uh, we had requested, and it was approved, a 5%, 5 to 7.5%, but then when the ordinance came about, the, uh, the change was only 6%, not 7.5%. And the other area that, that, uh, that did, didn't go through by the PUBs of uh, waiving the, uh, the uh, billing fees that they charge the city, is, and this is approximately $459,000. So this is something of the revenues that we had anticipated that have uh, that are not going to are not going to be realized. So um, they're going to waive the the three percent that we pay that we've been paying. They are not waiving. They're it. not. They're not waiving it. Um, so the o the only thing that we received from the Brownsville PUB uh, this particular fiscal year was the two point five million in academic assistance. Again. They, 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 it went through the board, their board on, on August 6, I mean October 6, and that's, that's what they approved. Um, on page 20, uh, page 20 shows the, uh, the fund balance, um, uh, estimated fund balance for the general fund. Uh, we would, right now, the, ba the way it is right now, and again, these are all estimates. Uh, we ended the year in a, an audited number of $16,592,450. Uh, we anticipate a fund balance right now based on what the, what's in the budget of $13,854,000. And we're at 15% uh, in reserves. And we, that's the, the percentage that, that we strive for every year to stay at least above 15%. Um, for the quarter on page 21 for the general fund, uh, that's 20, we, we uh, Again, revenues exceeding expenditures by five, 5.8 million. And one of the reasons why this is, is because uh, the majority of the property tax uh, is collected up at the beginning of the year. So most of that property tax is here. It's about close to uh, 68, 670%. As we go along on page 22 is the Convention and Tourism Fund. Uh, we have not transferred money from the general fund to the uh, transit system of about 395,000. So right now that, that, that particular fund shows a, a, a deficit. Community development on page 23, that's just a, a, a federal grant, uh, revenues and expenditures match. Page 24, the non-bonded debt, there's a fund balance of 11,616. Then on page 25, that's the, uh, the debt service fund. Um, we do have payments coming in on February the 15th. Uh, uh, this this month, that's the first. We make two payments during the year. We make a payment on, on February the 15th and August the, the 15th on some of our debt. Right now, the, the fund balance on that fund is close to 12.5 million. As we move along on page 26 is the uh, landfill tipping fee. Uh, we have a fund balance at the end of the month or the end of the quarter of 642,319. Airport, um, uh, there's a uh, shows uh, ex expenses exceeding revenues by 476,576. Uh, the bridge fund again, that's something that we went over it already. Uh, we have a fund balance of 574,834. This money is obviously it goes back to the general fund. Uh, page 29 on the motor vehicle parking system fund. That's our parking meter fund. Uh, shows uh, ex expenses exceeding revenues by 19,000. Uh, the transit system fund on page 30 uh, shows a net loss of 754,473. On page 31, there is a um, uh, contribution by 
various sources to take care of the deficit, and that's uh, advertising revenue and other miscellaneous revenues, along with a, a grant from the, uh, the state. And then there's a transfer from the general fund of 32,000. Uh, page 30 shows that there is a, a contribution by the FTA uh, federal government of 377,237. The Brownsville Golf Center Fund uh, uh, shows uh, uh, expenses exceeded revenues by 48,000. Um, and there is a subsidy that, uh, that the general fund contributes every year to keep this uh, fund in the black. And as we move along, we have several ERA grant funds. Uh, page 33, that was for transit system. All that money has already been spent and received. And that was for the uh, terminal, bus terminal. Uh, page 34, uh, there's another, another, another grant for that for homeless prevention and rapid rehousing, um, uh, 49,180. Um, then you have the, uh, the other fund, which is uh, fund 152 for the homeless prevention and rapid uh, rehousing for HUD, 89,628. Um, and then as we move along for page 36 is one the, uh, the other error grant, that's, that's the weatherization grant for 3,281,585, uh, 51,118 um, in expenses and revenues. Um, on page 37, again, revenues and expenses equally, 400,556. And this is also from Department of Housing and Urban Development cumulative money. On page uh, 38, it's the uh, city plaza, uh, air conditioning, traffic signal synchronization, it's at the landfill. Uh, again, the revenues and expenses are matching, 142,000. Uh, the grant on the uh, justice for law enforcement for purchase of equipment. Uh, again, they match revenues and expenses. Then on the, uh, finally on page 40, 41, and 40, uh, 42 in particular, shows the uh, analysis of the, of the medical insurance fund for the period ending uh, December 31st, shows uh, revenues of 2,097,604, expenditures of 1,938,279, we have receipts over expenditures of 159,000. We do have a fund balance at the end of December of 3,564,777. And then uh, the last page is the investment report. And this gives you a, a what the city had in investments at the end of December 31st, 2009, and the uh, quarter ending 12-31-2010. Uh, and it's uh, listed by some of the uh, banks that, that we invest or invest in pools. We also invest money for the BCIC, the Public Improvement District, and the Greater Brazil Incentive Pool Grade. And uh, that concludes my report. Pete, on the bridge, do we pay any debt? The county handles all that for us. Uh, the county uh, runs the entire, yes, there is debt. So there is debt on the bridge. This is the uh, monies that is left over at the end of each month. In other words, the county keeps 50%, the city of Brownsville also keeps 50%. In other words, the, uh, from the net. But traffic obviously is way down, and uh, so we're, we're seeing that uh, revenue reduction as, as the transfers are being made to the city. Thank you, Pete. Do we have an acknowledgement? No, Mr. Dr. Item 13, consideration and action to acknowledge various capital project scenarios to be funded by the issuance of certificates of obligation. I will obey our members of the city commission. At this time, we, we ask that this item be tabled. So moved. Second. Motion second, one favor. Aye. 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 Opposed, one carries. Item 14. Item 14, consideration and action regarding a request from Camille Playhouse for emergency repairs funding. Mayor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the motion to authorize city manager and legal to work directly with the Camille Playhouse so they can take care of this funding request. So we have a motion to uh, approve the, the funding approve? necessary, is that right? It is to authorize the city manager uh, to work with legal and the Camille Playhouse to take care of this funding issue, their request. 
I'm not legal. I'm not clear on commissioner's I, I, motion. I, I, I'm not, I'm either, not clear because either. he's not. I guess I'm just I'm I'm asking that the board that the commission consider allowing the city manager and legal to work with the Camille in resolving the funding issue for their roof repair, well, which has already taken place. First of all, I didn't even call for a vote. Uh, there's there's people here from the uh, Real Playhouse. Would you come forward, please, and, and explain your request so we can all know what the request is and what we're voting on? Because it sounds too vague, uh, the motion there. Mayor, commissioners, uh, my name is Stephen Scholl. I'm the president of the board of the Camille Playhouse. Uh, yes, I'd like to clarify something. Uh, there is an emergency, emergency situation. Um, we, we did have a roof uh, that needed repair. Uh, we had leaks coming in. Um, we tried to resolve it uh, the best way possible. Uh, we just had to put in our money and, and uh, fix it. Uh, it did cost us uh, $13,700. Um, we did cut our budget from last year to this year, knowing a lot of things that were gonna happen. We cut it by $100,000. Uh, but this did take a big chunk out of our, our budget. So uh, what we were asking is for a reimbursement for fixing the building. Um, okay, otherwise you would have gotten more damage. More damage and uh, we wouldn't be able to, to continue. So it was an emergency situation at the moment and we're in a situation now uh, as we are trying to finish off the year. And uh, So just to clarify, the roof issue has already been resolved? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll get to that a little further. Right, yeah. that's what I understood. I mean, it, it, what I'm hearing from you is that either you all took care of it personally or there'd be more damage it done would have, and you would be good. It, it would have been worse. Mayor? Okay, well, we appreciate you giving us this information. I think Mr. Cabot would like to say something. Yeah, well, I think we need to understand that the building is, 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 is theirs. And it has been theirs. And, and I think there's a, an agreement that it's theirs until 2013 in the books. So, uh, here, here, what, what, what we've done is they applied to DCIC for the for the funding, uh, but they had already done the repair. So uh, the, the legal issue was that DCIC initially voted yes, but then they could not fund it because the roof's already there. So I believe what Commissioner Camarillo wants, me to, wants us to do is work with them to see how we can legally uh, assist them financially in, re in what they've already repaired, which is the, the roof to their building. They have a lease with the city that started in 1964, 70 or so, 30 years that were redone in uh, 1993 for 20 more years. So in 2013, a decision will be made as to whether they want to maintain the building or turn it over to the city. So we do have some interest in the building, obviously, because eventually it's going to be ours. And plus what they do there is something that is good for our community. So What's the request for? The request is for twenty thousand uh, dollars. When you placed it on the agenda, where exactly were you planning on the funding coming from? Uh, they, 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 they submitted the request to me or the commission through me, so I put it on the agenda for that purpose to hear right now what the request was. And I'm assuming now, that the, okay, sorry, go you're ahead. asking me a question and I answered it. The the request for the funding would either come up from our from our reserves as an emergency. Uh, now I know it's a reimbursement, I want to ask you to reimburse it. As uh, emergency reimbursement for the repairs done to a building that is owned by the city, uh, or they uh, serve the community as part of the commission, mm -hmm. and the support of the Camille Playhouse. Uh, yeah. to well, that, that's, that's where the issue is. It's, you know, my interpretation, it is not our building, it is their building. <coughs> it is our land. They are leasing from the city. And our and our leasing to, uh, are leasing the land from the city. The building's theirs. They can possibly we'll have to get legal opinions. Possibly give it up in 2013. Okay. But this is this talks about repairs to the roof and nothing else. Now, all the paperwork <laughs> that I've received or obtained is a little over thirteen thousand dollars for roof repair, not twenty thousand. So anything else that they're requesting from us, we'll have to evaluate. Basically, what it is that I see here, same thing with. The city got the PUD of grants. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're asking for. For a grant for the roof and I don't know what else. And that's going to have to speak to those and what they need to want. Is it that it, the roof only? Or? Well, the main purpose is to reimburse us for the roof. There are a few other things that are, we're in need of. Um, 
and that's where the extra money came from. That's what it was rounded off to 20,000. There's sound and lighting, uh, but the main thing was the roof, and um, you just take care of that for, for the roof. Okay. What is the issue with the roof? May I have the floor now? Um, $20,000 is a lot of money, and we have several organizations out there, nonprofits, that are under similar circumstances, and they're not here before us. So it puts us in a very precarious situation to have to approve this funding request and then open the door for other organizations to come before us and make a similar request. We want to help you, I want to help you, um, but I'd like to see some more initiative when it comes to fundraising, just like every other organization has stepped up their fundraising efforts. I can maybe um, make a motion to revise the amount to maybe a fourth of that. Commissioner, let me just point Before out, that was noted when we spoke earlier, that the only reason why they were not funded by 4B was because they had already paid the contractor a day earlier. If it was, if they waited one more day, which again, it goes back to all these different rules, and I could be wrong, but that's what, that's what I heard from Mr. Stoll, that if they would've just waited one more day, then there would've been no issue, and they would've gotten the, fun, they would've gotten the check from 4B. So considering, I think it was, you know, not technicality, but an issue of timing, and whether they were aware of that or not, I don't know. That's why I've asked to let city manager and Mark kind of work that out because maybe they can work it out with 4B. You know, it's yeah, you know I so kind of just I see because they were already granted, they were granted the funds for the roof repair. And I, I understand how much, how much how much of the uh, city funds was cut from your budget? Quite a bit, from about 82 to 25. From 82 to 25. Okay, this this is what I I, I, I see. This is no different. They just took the initiative of paying for those repairs before coming here. Had they not paid for the repairs for five years ago. Actually, that's right. incorrect, Mayor. That's actually not the way it worked out. Well, they were, why don't we do they this? were already so granted the funding from 4B. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I mean, had they not paid for the repairs, then this wouldn't be a, a debating. I think we'd probably get into, I'm, uh, I think we'd be more prone to doing so. The budget was cut uh, from the city to, to the Camille Pereja. I would like, and, and it's the same thing, like we asked for a grant from PUP, they're asking for a grant from us because they're having a, a shortfall, so to speak. So I, I would think in support of the community and how for the needs of this community, we should help them out. Our reserves are healthy and we can afford to help them out, uh, but knowing that we had cut their budget quite a bit. Now, the money to your question is, used for, for a good purpose, which was to rebuild the roof. That they, you know, had they not done it, it would have, it would have increased the, the, the damage. It was the cost, and we would have to pay more. So, you know, I would like for the commission to consider giving them a grant if they're requesting based on the fact that we, are, we cut their budget drastically. May I say something? You may. Thank you. I can understand where Commissioner Camarillo wants us to look at this issue. I have no problem with us looking at this issue. Unfortunately, there are technicalities as to when you can file things and when you can apply for certain funding. I don't know that we can give you the $20,000 that you're asking for. The other problem that I have is that, as Commissioner Zamora said, you're here today. Mm -hmm. Next month, is it the MFA? Is it the Brownsville Historical? Is it mm -hmm. where, you know, as the mayor says, what I thought we were in a pretty tight place. I didn't think we had healthy mm -hmm. fund balances. And now he's saying that we do, and my whole understanding for the last six to eight months has been that we're, we're riding on broke. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if that's the case, I would second and tweak Commissioner Camarillo's motion, which is why don't you all sit down with legal and with the city manager and come back to us and see what we can do, because I know that BCIC wanted to fund some of your repairs, mm -hmm. and that's what those monies would have been for, but you mitigated or you took care of the issue ahead of time, and that's kind of where we are, and we do need to follow the rules because everybody needs to be on the same playing field, otherwise it's not fair. Well, the amount that I really want you to consider is the 13,000. And why don't you talk to the city manager and the city attorney about that, 
and that way you can come back to us and you can tell us exactly what you want and they can tell us what we can do. I understand. Let, let me be very clear that. about this, okay? In essence, we're dancing around it because forget, forget the roof. Forget the rules? For, forget the mm -hmm. rules. Oh. Forget the roof, forget all these legalities they're talking about. Yeah, just forget the rules. So forget all these legalities because you brought in the roof and all that. Now it's made it to a legal issue of how to reimburse you for the roof. If this commission wanted to give you a grant of $20,000, forget all that. They could give you the $20,000 as part of restoring part of your budget that was cut. So take off the table reimbursement, take off the table all that. Make your request based on the grant that you have uh, for your budget, based on the fact that it was cut from the city. That's what you need to do. Just make a simple little request that you need $20,000 because your budget was cut drastically by the city. Then how you spend it, that's up to you all. That takes away the legalities that we're talking about here. But if they don't want to give you the money, they can, they can wrap you around in all the legalities that they want. Mm -hmm. But if, if there's an intent to help the Camille Playhouse based on the request, just like we went to PUB, got $3 million from them, when we shouldn't have got it maybe, but we needed it, you need the money because your budget was cut. So based on that, I'd like to make the motion myself. There's already been a motion. Um, excuse a me. No, excuse I me. Ask, it, it, I didn't ask for a motion. Uh, legal, you want <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I think the issue here is granting public funds to private corporations. Uh, if this property was, in fact, owned by the city of Brownsville, as uh, it will be or it may be in 2013, um, I think we might be deal dealing with a different issue. What ha well, yeah. I'm, let, let me explain. Fund them every year, right? I think we fund them from hotel motel tax mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So we can't give them. Uh, the I, grant. I think so the hotel motel tax money for this year is, uh, but already good. portioned out between the entities. Now I, mean, I know the hotel motel had a shortage. We funded the hotel motel from the general fund. Well, so I, I think I think we would be dealing with a very different issue, Mr. Mayor, if w the city actually owned the building. But the city owns the land, and the uh, the organization owns the building as of present. Okay. Now there are provisions in that lease where that building may revert to the city, and there may be ways that the city can legally help the, the playhouse. And I, so I think Commissioner Camarillo's motion, in terms of having the city manager and legal try to work with them to see how we might legally do this, makes sense. Okay. But we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Which Aye. motion? Uh, Commissioner Camarillo's motion. I would only ask that we have them actually come back to us once they have a response and it's just not handled by you all that this is open and people know what happens here. Steve, okay. just to understand the dynamic here, we know each other for a long time. We know we're going to help you. We're going to do our best to help you and the Camille Lightner. He chooses to take it a different way. You know that we're here for you. You know we're going to help you. Uh, take the time for the board and everybody to come back to Pastor Charlie and our legal. We'll, uh, we'll, I guess, if you'll allow me, to, re, to resubmit the motion to table until city management at legal has the right uh, and the ability <coughs> to be able to talk to you, sit down, and try to work something out so that we can work right. this out here. Well, I just want to say we're part of the Dean Porter Park. We're mm -hmm. part of the Midi Cultural Area. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to keep it up. I know it's pointed out that we do own the building and we do lease the land. And um, but it's come to a point where we need some help. And I'm willing to, to come to the table and, and talk to you. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you very much. Commissioner Camarillo, would you withdraw your motion? Actually, no, I'm, I'm going to keep my motion the way it is, but I'm just going to go ahead and allow that they do come back at the next meeting. Okay, we have a motion and we second. have a second. So we're going to keep it the same way. Okay. We're going to just authorize them to get together. Okay, you'll come back to the next meeting. See if, if something can, can be worked out. At a future meeting? At a future Hopefully. meeting. Yeah. A future meeting. Mm -hmm. In case we don't make it, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Hopefully it'll meeting. work out for you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Item 15, consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2011-005 to affirm the appointment of a board member to the Cameron Appraisal District Board of Directors. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. And a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, Aye. motion carries item 16. Item 16, consideration and action to adopt resolution 2011-006 to authorize an MOU for a mutual aid agreement between the City of Brownsville Fire Department and MedCare Ambulance Service. 
Honorable Mayor, uh, Commissioners, I uh, request that this item be tabled for further study. So moved. We have a request to table. Can I have a motion? So moved. We have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. second. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item 17. Item 17. Consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2011-007 in support of the development and expansion of animal welfare policy and legislation within the state of Texas and throughout the Rio Grande Valley. Okay. This is self-explanatory. It's in your packet. Uh, can I have a motion? So moved. So a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Second. Okay, you got a second? Okay. All in favor? All opposed, motion carries. Item 18. Item 18, consideration and action on resolution number 2011-008 to support the use of state rainy day fund resources and elimination and eliminate certain tax exemptions to address the state budget deficit. Okay. Well, everybody went to um, Austin. They heard uh, what we ex anticipate, uh, some budget cuts that are gonna affect lots of funding for the state of Texas. And this resolution is being uh, introduced in asking our legislators to, before they cut education, public safety, to consider uh, dipping into the rainy day fund um, and to eliminate certain tax exemptions uh, instead of uh, cutting uh, public safety and education. Uh, can I have a motion for that? So moved. so moved. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Item 19. Item 19, consideration and action to award a term contract for vacant lot mowing services for the Brownsville Public Health Department. Honorable Mayor, City Commissioners, staff recommendation is based on a successful negotiations with the proposed uh, contractors. Staff recommends to award a term contract for vacant lot mowing services for the public, for the Brownsville Public Health Department be awarded to the following contractors. There's uh, six contractors. Flores Tractor Mowing Services out of Brownsville, LAG Total Property Lawn Maintenance of Brownsville, Rios Mowing Services of San Benito, Texas, Hope Landscaping of Brownsville, Great Dunamis Corporation, uh, Corporation of Brownsville, Texas, and Maldonado Nursery and Landscaping Incorporated out of La Feria, Texas. Now this contract shall commence upon appro uh, approval by city commission and shall expire on January 31st, 2012, and the city reserve the, the, the right and option to extend the life of the contract for two additional years if it's mutually acceptable by the contractor, the contractors in the city of Brownsville. Funding for these, ser for these services will be provided from the general fund, account 01-535-779, and the property owners will be billed for the cost of the mowing services provided under this contract, plus an administrative fee. Now the administration of the <coughs> excuse me, public health department uh, agrees with this recommendation. Do we have approved? questions? Roberto, I've had, yes. when, I mean, this program, just for clarification's sake, this wasn't in existence for quite a while. And people had been asking why weren't these things getting cut. I know that at, at certain times, our Greens Division was taking care of most of these issues. Now, was, when this was introduced, the prices that are listed on here, mm -hmm. starting at 51.95, going all the way up to 105 on, on a standard lot, is that the norm? Yeah, well, it all depends on the, on <coughs> the um, how the property is, how the grass is, you know, depending on the, how tall the, the grass is. So there's, there's um, is there a, see, is, is basically what I'm getting, is there a city fee? Are we collecting some of, out of this, out of that charge? Are we getting something out of that? Yes, we are. Okay. That would explain it. It's based on the lien that's gonna get placed on the property. That is correct. We have to go and mow. Plus the amount of money that we're, we're paying the contractors to do the service. Mr. Luna, just one quick note. Um, I hope we can do the same when it comes to demolishing of abandoned homes. And hopefully we can put a rotation list together soon. Um, because I know that's been another issue that's come up. Every well, I don't time think buildings and standards is met for several months. I've had complaints from board, from committee members that they haven't met. So that's another and issue. I, I sent Mr. Gomez a request just last Friday on a home um, on, uh, on Harrison. I'm sorry, on Tide, on Van Buren that's in bad shape. And there's still one on Madison. And I, I can go on and on. Um, we need to really sit down and put that together. I will be more than happy to sit with uh, Evaristo and go over that. Move to approve. Is this a rotation list? Yes, sir, it is. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Item 20. 
Item 20, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase, delivery, and installation of two AC chilled water systems for the Brownsville Event Center. Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve. I just have a question. It seems like a whole lot of Sorry. money. It's $187,000 for the. Well, the equipment is, is it's expensive. Uh, it should last for another 10, 15 years if we have uh, pretty good maintenance. If we have pretty good maintenance? Well, the, it, it's also because of the, the, the weather. You know, we can't compare ourselves with San Antonio or, you know, some we other cities. We do have a good maintenance program for chilled systems, which requires expertise. We've learned that, I guess, the hard way from the king. But we have chilled systems, for example, at the police department as well. So, yes, they need to be <coughs> uh, monitored and checked by experts relating to that topic. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Adjourn. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. All the gentlemen, those who do not grow a beard for charities will get fined. There was a uh, ordinance passed here requiring men to wear beards. Now they get fined, so be careful. That's what I'm going on. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you.